about 12 years ago, uh, I, as a senior lead at my, where I work, uh, I link up with to try to create job opportunities for the homeless, able-bodied homeless who say they need work. They protest jobs, not jail, housing, not handcuffs. Okay. All right. I'm going to see you. I found an oil plant that was willing to hire 10 people from Skid Row just because they knew me and loved me. I said, you get these men here, we'll give them a job making anywhere from thirty dollars to $60,000 a year. <laughs> what? Went down to Skid Row and those same loudmouths, I went and gave each of them an application. Here you go. Show up. Guess how many showed up? Two. One, the first person that showed up ended up working two days and quit because he got arrested selling drugs <laughs> on the way to the, to the, to the job, right? Uh, the other one decided not to show up after one day because he didn't want to lose his social security benefits mm. and the other eight didn't even show up. That's what happens when you create assistance without accountability that, that, that needs to change. But right. here's the kicker. I was an undercover officer in skid row for two and a half years. Greatest gig I ever had. I got to be, I got to be myself to a degree. And, uh, one day, uh, we had to go out and deal with two issues, gang members who are gambling dope money in front of drug programs. Uh, and we had to deal with some uh, sex workers who were HIV positive infecting their uh, jobs. So we went out there and the first group we dealt with was the gamblers. So I got in my uniform. I put on a tank top. I put on a beanie. I put on uh, some jailhouse blue pants, jailhouse wristband, and some flip flops. And I went bouncing down the street to San Julian. And everybody just believed it that I just got out of jail. It was crazy. So I went and I saw this gambling game and I saw all these dope dealers and I watched the game and I saw the violation and I gave the signal to my partners. I said, come get them. Police officers came around the corner. Somebody yelled out one time. That's the sign that police are in the area. And I had to stay in character. So I start running ass and elbows, just like everybody mm. else. And he gets the fuck out of here. Right. So <laughs> I'm running and I hear this drug dealer call my name. He says, hey, 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 cuz, slow down, cuz. Where you going? I said, man, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to go back to jail. I just got out. As you can see, he goes, no, 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 no. They good. They got who they going to get. Uh, let me talk to you real quick. I'm like, what's up, bro? He said, God dang, man, you all slow. I said, yeah. <laughs> like, I said, damn, you just got out too? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, damn, can you fight? And I'm like, yeah, I'm nice with these. What's up? He says, shit, you need some work? I'm like, hell yeah, I need some work, man. I just got out of the glass house. He goes, okay, that's what you're going to do. You see that little Asian chick right there? You see that old dude right there? See young buck over there? Each one of them owe me money. I'll pay you $25 a day to bust their head to the white man until I get my money from them. You understand that? You good with that? I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks, bro. Gave him some dap, and I ran off, right? We arrest that guy and the other gamblers, and my boss says to me, we got three hours left on our shift, guys. We got some work to do. We got some girls out there infecting people with HIV. Let's go get them. So I kept the same uniform on and everybody was like, you ain't going to get no girl looking like that. I was like, boy, I'm chocolate. Watch this. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm bobbing down the street. I get to seventh and Stanford and I see this beautiful, but weathered uh, young 23 year old woman who said, Hey, big daddy, you need a date. You look like you just got out. I'm like, hell yeah, I need a date girl. What's on the menu. And she started reading the menu to me. $20 for a suck, $40 for a fuck. And don't do me in the booty. And we're good. And then she starts to start to cry. And I'm like, damn, but what you crying for? And she goes, look, I'm sorry. Um, my man just got sent up for about 12 years. I ain't got nobody. Um, you look like a nice guy. I can look in your eyes and tell you got a good heart. Um, but I live over here at the hotel down the street. I know it's raggedy, but you got a place to stay? And I was like, no, nah, the homie was trying to get me some SRO. She says, no, nah, forget that. That's going to take you about six months. What? She says, yeah, here's what you do. You come stay with me. You can have the vagina for free. I'll go make the money and give it all to you. Just take care of me. You know what? In a span of three hours, I'm fresh getting out of jail. I had a job, a girlfriend, a place to stay, and a tax-free income. We have to get real about what's happening in places like Skid Row where centralized services are. We're just creating problems. We're not helping anybody. We're just containing problems that are spilling over the walls. Right. And we're seeing that everywhere we go. We got to get back to common sense and, and stop politicizing police work. 